This is all about uh, Bobby Dandridge week on my program. <laughs> okay, then. <laughs> you know, well, let's get it going. Okay. Going through the, the, the walk with the Kareems and the Oscar Robertsons and players like that, you know, they often talk about you have to learn how to win the big prize in order to, in fact, win it. So that by the time you got to Washington, you could be sort of like the missing link. Well, you you know, I learned um, I learned from the beginning. My foundation was set up by a guy named Russell Williams, who coached me in junior high school, and he had played at North Carolina Central, and he had played for Coach McClendon. So John McClendon. The father of fast break basketball. The father of basketball, fast break. But Coach Williams, Russell Williams, taught me the fundamentals, dribbling, passing. And just so happened I was about a 6'2 guy who played the guard position at Maggie Walker High School. And where I learned championship was from going to Norfolk State University uh, from my coach, a guy, Ernie Fears. That was, and championship character was built uh, from us running four miles a day for two months <laughs> <laughs> before the first game, running four miles a day, six days a week, and still coming in the gym practicing two and a half hours. So that was where that championship character was really built. And the teachers that I had in high school, the professors I had in Norfolk State, that's where champions are made. You know, they, they, they aren't just made through the sport itself, but the other intangibles, work ethics, uh, integrity, uh, self-confidence, these. So by the time I got to Milwaukee, I just happened to join up with a couple of other champions. And I think that when I got to Milwaukee, uh, the ability to play defense, the ability to go from being a, a leading scorer in college to realizing, hey, I'm here with Kareem, who was Lou Alcindor there. You're not going to lead this team in scoring, but you can make yourself uh, an indispensable part of this team. And, and, and I think that's where the championship mentality comes in. I, I look at how um, Dwayne Wade took a step back to allow uh, LeBron to be a champion. I look at how Steph Curry and Clay Thompson took a step back to the to allow Durant to be a champion. And, and, and I think that's what championship athletes do, whatever they can for the success of a team. And when I got to Milwaukee, I had that in me from Norfolk State, Coach Fields, Coach Williams, Magal Walker High School. That was there and the teachers that I had. Um, when I got to Milwaukee, I had the opportunity to refine those championship qualities. Anytime you play with Kareem, who was a winner at UCLA. But the true teacher was the big O. <laughs> I mean, I mean, he, he had great work ethics. He probably played harder in practices than he did in games. Um, he was well respected on the floor as well as off the floor. And when I saw him and became his friend, then that's where I began to, my game began to grow because champions are more than just can you score, can you lead a team in scoring. Champion is that not only are you a champion on the court, you're a champion off the court. You, you're a leader wherever you go. So Washington really had a finished product when I went there. All I needed was 
some people that would be willing to follow. And my ability to get um, the coaches, well, the coaches knew my history, so they believed in me. Uh, the general manager had to convince the owner, look, this is the guy here. If we're going to win a championship in our lifetime, Danridge is the guy to bring. The coaches accepted me. Um, my my West Unsell story was the third day in training camp when I went to Washington, I twisted my ankle and he walked past and said, oh, you're supposed to be our savior and you're hurt all <laughs> <laughs> And that only the way that uh, West could say it, right? Only West could say it in a sincere manner that it didn't hurt my feelings. And, uh, you know, Washington allowed me to have a team of my own because I was able to corral Elvin and Wes and Henderson and Wright and Coach Water into believing in me. Uh, and a part of that was I came to play every night. So Washington gave me the opportunity to, it was like being back at Norfolk State. This is my squad. Y'all come on. I got y'all coming. That's four Hall of Famers that you got a chance to play with. You ever sit back and go, wow. I mean, a, a blessing, a luck of the draw. How do you look at that's being that, able to that. say that I was teammates with Kareem, I was com uh, teammates with the Big O, Elvin Hayes, and Wes Unsell. Two teams, four Hall of Famers in a, what, 13-year career? Amazing. Yeah, 13-year yeah, career. That, but, that, that's amazing. You, you couldn't have written a better script, could you? And remember, this was without free agency and without the collusion of the players to... <laughs> <laughs> to put a squad together because you basically played with the hand that was dealt you. And this was accomplished through trades and whatever, no free agents or anything. But to play with these four guys um, was amazing because each one of them just were tremendous tremendous talents with different personality and personalities that I respected each one's individuality. And uh, when you can play with guys like this, and that's why at no time did I not feel like I shouldn't be in the Hall of Fame because my uplifting and stuff would come from these guys and and uh, so it was a blessing to play with guys like that I'm, I'm sure it was now i want to talk about paying it forward if you will because in a strange kind of way with you going into the hall class of 2021 with ben wallace another yeah. ciaa alum where you were a prolific scorer and sort of i'll use a a, a hip-hop term you, you were kind of on the wing. You were, you were like one of the sexy players. Here's a guy that's a lunch pail guy. He's the only player that goes into the Hall of Fame who scores five points. I mean, that, that is probably the lowest scoring total on average ever. He's the only player to start in an all-star game who wasn't, you know, drafted uh, in the first round. What does it mean to you to be a part of a legacy that laid the foundation so that somebody could come along like Ben Wallace and you all take that walk into Springfield together? You know, it's special. It's, it's, it's a story that you can't make up. And even with Ben and I, Ben has to take his hat off and be grateful for Charles Oakley. I mean, I look at um, Sam Sam Jones, uh, the Pearl. Um, I look at guys that should have made it but didn't make it, Cleo Hill. Um, we look at Al Adams, who was sort of the lunch pail type guy, as was Ben Wallace, but those 
teams could not have won without Ben Wallace. And, uh, you know, he and I talked during the, uh, during the nomination, I mean, during the uh, announcement and we just set off to ourselves and smiled and said, mm, we got them again. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they, they yeah. never really wanted to pay us our worth, but we done came in here and we're getting ready to go into the Naismith Hall of Fame. What more can two brothers want? You know, this is, this is a day to be rejoiceful, and, and I hope it encourages players that come behind us because it, it has nothing to do with the conference. It has, you know, first of all, we got blessed. We took advantage of an opportunity and it was hard work. It's not no joke going to somebody's training camp and you really don't know anybody in there and uh, players are dismissing our abilities because we didn't go and play D1 and then at the bottom and then the top, here we are getting ready for the weekend of September the 10th and 11th. I can't wait. I got about a minute. I have to get this in though. <laughs> uh, Cause I could talk to you all day. I really, really could. Yeah. But to, the, to that notion right now, we've got a newfound renaissance of high-end blue chip, uh, black talented athletes not just only basketball players, but football players who are coming back to what are now known as HBCUs. As you remember, there was a time that's all that we had. When you see these kids making that kind of decision right now, what does this signal to you? That, that you know, the HBCUs are going to, and I think they look at it more. I'm, 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 ex I'm proud of them for taking that step. And these are what you call our future leaders. You know, leaders make bold steps like that, which means that they are looking to have a full life. They want to know how we as African Americans live and and experience life. And I think that they will never regret taking that step because there have been so many successes coming out of HBCU colleges and university other than the athletes. I mean, as some young lady that's just become the head of CNN. And so, you know, and I know with Norfolk State, you know, we got college presidents and Sometimes I look at folks that stayed in the, ac the academic community and I'm saying, oh, y'all went to these corporations. Y'all got a better pension than, <laughs> 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 than I got. So I just wish everybody well and to take the chance and give HBCUs an opportunity to give you a life that you'll never forget. He is a walking legend. He is incomparable. And most of all, he is a Hall of Famer. Have you given out your first autograph with HOF on the back yet? I have not as of yet. I, so, I have not done that as of yet because, you know, in absorbing all this stuff and returning phone calls and doing interviews and and returning text messages. I just haven't had time <laughs> to really do any autographs and everybody in Norfolk knows me. So they already got my autograph and they know I'm gonna have some trash talking if they ask me to put that <laughs> HOF on that. Wait a minute, hold on. I just can't get this to you. <laughs> you have earned it, my friend. And, and, and let me just tell you, uh, I'm so glad to see somebody getting their flowers while they're around <laughs> to still smelling, Bobby D. You know what I'm saying. You I know, know exactly what you mean. And, and, you know, in closing, I said, bless me so that I'm still living if it's going to happen. And by the grace of God, today, as we talk, I'm able to walk. 
Let me be able to walk up there with a smile on my face and accept this final honor. Well, I look forward to being there uh, that weekend of uh, September 10th and 11th. And again, <laughs> on behalf of all of us who came behind you, those of us who call games and are still calling games, when we get to the CIAA tournament, there is no doubt that the pillars and foundation of that event one of them has your name on it, my friend. And again, thanks for the memories that you gave us in the association. Thanks for the memories for a kid from around the way who got his only uh, local pro basketball championship to uh, celebrate. I mean, and, and thanks for giving me the pound at Bowie State after practice when I was a youngin' too, my friend. Hey, hey congratulations. Look Thank forward you. to shaking your hand, uh, giving you a pound and a hug in uh, Springfield. <laughs> And uh, once again, a long and hearty congratulations, not only from my friends at the Sports Group 2.0, but from your community, because you would be shocked how many people have been impacted by this moment, both of your generation and of mine, and we couldn't be more happier for you. Bob Dandridge, basketball legend, tremendous HBCU example of success, and uh, God bless you, my friend. Look forward Thank to seeing you, you in um, September real soon. Thanks for having me on, and you have a blessed day. That's Bobby Dandridge, my friends. It's the Sports Group 2.0 on HSRN, where we put the U in HBCU because Black Talk matters over here.